What up, guys? This is the Double Take Barry and Succession podcast, gaming with both episodes Eight. Sunday nights. And we're recording it on Monday because we had the film festival yesterday where I got a sweep. I completely sweep the floor after everyone left because uh, I lost everything. No snubs for Becky Lyons. Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Was... Unlike, uh, but in truth, unlike Jared Mankin, he did not win that election. <laughs> wow, I did not win the election. It was stolen from me. <laughs> yeah, just like how the twenty twenty one was. Um, yeah. Let's um, let's get into this episode. So, let's just do quick take. Um, Succession. Succession. Good episode. The funeral did not go how I thought it would go, which is great, but it still was totally amazing. Like, it was better than what I, my, uh, my guess for what it was going to be. Yeah, but I don't even remember. I think we, I predicted last week that I think Roman would, like, break down while crying. Yeah, no, um, that, like, that was he, guaranteed to happen. That, that was, was guaranteed. Just, that was just his character, yeah. and, like, the setup for that was pretty obvious. Yeah, I, I loved it. I thought it was a really fresh episode. It was, like, I think like a not it wasn't like as like tense as America decides the previous episode. Yeah, but it was still it gave a lot of like good story, and that's. I mean, there the was day. no like like tension for like being able to like win or lose. It was just how mm-hmm. the stuff's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And I just I really love this episode. I think it sets up the finale quite well. The finale, one hundred percent board meeting fight between Roman. Um, Shiv and Kendall, but yeah. primarily I would say Shiv and Kendall. Roman is kind of ousted this episode. Yeah, Roman is like destroyed. The one thing I loved about this episode was you just see Kendall just lose literally everything. Mm-hmm. Like he lost right away. Yeah, yeah he lost he his lo- family assistant. assistant. He loses Mankin kind of because he won't block the deal yeah. anymore. Yeah, uh, but he did get like a spe- like a talking with Mankin, you know, yeah, he had a little conversation, and then everyone interrupted him. <laughs> no, yeah. like, no, Connor, like, yo, he's like, no, you can I get a seat? <laughs> yeah, I would say he loses in like relationship aspects, but in this episode, he also kind of gained something. He became kind of Logan in this episode. Yeah. I think it's like a Godfather two ending because in the end of Godfather two, I did not two, see Godfather just- two. Godfather 2 is like this guy who's like he's like the son of the mafia guy. He's fully become the mafia guy at the expense of all of the relationships. Mm, yeah. And so let's get I'm gonna get into the quick summary of this episode. Got it. So um let's see. As the show comes to a close, all the characters meet up at Logan's funeral after you and and after Ewan gives a very hard take about Logan Roy for the eulogy, Roman breaks down and can't give his own eulogy. And then, so Kendall and Shiv both give speeches to kind of, like, soften up Ewan's eulogy. And so, but after the event, the corporate games continue with both Kendall and Shiv and Sh- both Kendall and Shiv trying to cozy up to Matt, to Mencken, and with Roman officially ousted as he fucked at the funeral. And similarly with Shiv and Madison at the top, leading to a finale where we're going to see a boardroom battle is my prediction. Yeah, definitely what I would call a uh, a management melee. I say we can analyze this episode in... We can either... We can do it. I feel like the three forces of this episode was Shiv, Kendall, and Roman. Yeah, all, all the three main siblings. And then you and, and then, um... We can break down the speeches yeah. individually, too. So, th- I would say this was, for me, it felt like a Roman episode. Yeah, oh yeah, this was definitely Roman's time to shine. You just, like, him finally getting hit with all the grieving stuff. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, I'm gonna just start with Ewan's speech, because that's, like, that was my favorite part of the that episode. That was also loved- my favorite part. I just loved it, how we got to see, because... I don't know, Beck, I don't know if you feel this, but I thought this episode was kind of like trying to show how the different perspectives of this man who was so gigantic and how they each have like a perspective of him. Mm. Yeah. Like each person has a different perspective of Logan, you know? And so Ewan does, here, I'll talk, I'll do Ewan. So essentially, 
Ewan's very liberal brother kind of gives like a kind of like a speech, like you know, he stuns everyone by praising kind of Logan's early life and kind of but also criticizing his legacy. Yeah, it's a very it's a very hard take, as Greg would like to say. Yeah, um, I definitely thought the speech was just a really good um way to deliver like the backstory behind him yeah it really humanizes him a lot more was like the fact that like uh his sister died and then he was in the oh and speaking of that they did they we mentioned throughout the entire show rose as like what happened to rose and this was a very nice and natural way to tell us what happened to rose yeah i enjoyed that heavily and we get i see how logan would feel like kind of like he feels responsible for Rose's death, you know? Yeah, you can see how that changed him into the man he is. But it's not totally the man he is. Because, like, I like how each of the characters, they didn't provide why Logan... Because, like, obviously, Logan's childhood trauma is a big part of why Logan is why he is. But it's not the main reason. He wasn't going to unravel democracy because he accidentally killed his sister with polio when he was young. It's just, none of these are full, complete keys of Logan. They're, they're yeah. each just parts of Logan. Because I don't think the show cares enough to tell us why Logan is why he is. That's not really interesting. We would, they don't have flashbacks, so you, Logan as a child being abused by his uncle Noah. Yeah. They, that's not this type of show, you know? Yep. And it's, they're, they're giving keys of Logan, but they're all different perspectives. And, but the... I felt like the Ewan one was kind of the saddest one, you know? Yeah, I also felt like it would, it's one of the big ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I would say the centerpiece of the speech was Kendall's, of the thing, was Kendall's eulogy, you know? Yeah. It's like... He made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But, um, let's see. I had some notes about this. Um... I would say... He kind of seeing Kendall's speech is kind of like showing how Logan was um a powerful force of life, even though it's it's despite his harsh nature, it's kind of like filled with images of birth and creation, describing Logan as like the engine of creation, someone whose vitality is a necessary force in this new world, and how he kind of wants to keep that force of Logan. Yeah, it was very um philosophical in that way. Like a lot of metaphors and stuff. My question is, what do you think broke Roman? Well, um, I like to think it was Ewan's speech. Really? Because, like, um, I think it's like everyone telling him that, you know, he, like, Logan was a good guy for all this time to finally, like, hear an actual truth mm -hmm. about him is, um, yeah. He finally realized that, yeah. It's like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that kind of brought everything up to Logan. Like, that, I felt Kieran Culkin's acting when he did, like, is he still in there? And he was yeah. crying. That was really powerful. It's like all these feelings about Logan just coming up to the forefront. Because guess what? Pre-grieving is not really a thing. Huh. Yeah. And I, I really like how it was played out and and like it's i feel like i feel like it did conf look you and speech confronted by the side of his father's coffin kind of like brought this feeling out and like it just it made him be feel confronted with his true feelings of sad because you know what yeah. was kind of a sad line he said later he said he made me breathe funny <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's the power of, that that's the power of Logan Roy, a Titanic of a man. Yeah, and the Titanic was every sink. Yeah, that's that was great, right there. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I got the. Yeah, that was really okay. Yeah, um, you know what was really funny? I love how they went to like the mausoleum after, and they said five million. That's a really good deal, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the whole mausoleum stuff was funny. Like, yeah, five million dollars. Uh, some random dude who ran a pet store bought it. Sold it on auction. 
Yeah, that's actually a really fire deal, if you didn't know. Yeah, I mean, like, a New York cemetery, you own that land, and it would just sit mm-hmm. there forever, that's actually kind of a good deal. And also, yeah. he's literally, like, a bil- multi-billionaire, so mm-hmm. makes sense. And also, yeah. it stores, like, a ton of other people. I did love... Yeah, I agree. I did love you, Ewan's word use of the word meagerness. You know, yeah, he was he had some sort of meagerness about him, and I guess I do too. Cause like, I feel like it fundamentally shows kind of like the the tragedy of Logan Roy. Cause you know, none of this is a very happy ending for Logan. He died ultimately trying to ruin the world. If you, if I guess it could I say, mean, I, I wouldn't say he was, I would say he was, um, he went out, uh, the way he went out. No, he went out at, with selfish, selfish ambitions, not caring about the wake he left behind him. Yeah. And I, I agree to that moment because, you know, in the first episode of six of the season, he has a conversation with his bodyguard, yeah, you know, that's yeah, about the world and like, that that's that was a foreshadowing that he's gonna die later. What? In that's insane. He talks and about so, death and then he dies. This is insane. Yeah, I think it was just I feel like, all about when yeah. he died, which is like what was mm-hmm. shocking. Mm-hmm. And I'd say I feel like he kind of feels bad about where human beings are going. You know, and I don't know. I I don't think Logan ever realized he might have had a part to play in the destruction of humans. Yeah, but. He was, I guess we could say, at the end of the day, Logan Roy was a deeply complex man. I would say the only show that does a really better job, just no, not better, just just as a good of a job as like casting a death over a show is Better Call Saul with the death of Chuck. You know, yeah. I the death Logan Roy looms over this show, you know, in the yeah. minds of the characters. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get to sh- yeah. I did. I just think one thing also about this is like the time between events, because I feel like in this episode they said, "Yeah, that election last night was." Yeah. It's well, so like this is like the day after the election. I think there because I feel like they said like every day is an episode this season. It's a day each episode or something. It's like yeah. it's like a lot is happening day after day. It is. Like no mm. wonder Tom is tired because he's been he's. He was in Norway like five episodes, like five days ago. Yeah, and um, he's it's like entire jobs on the line. Yeah, I thought the New York article, the New York Times article, was really funny. Yeah, I liked how Greg was just like yeah. so, <laughs> like trying to grab any like sense of like power and responsibility. Can I, can I get an intro to Menken? Yeah, no, no, I, I, I can do the wheel. I can do the wheel. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then he just comes up to Mankin and then Rome's like, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. Um Shift Speech we really talked about I feel like Shift Speech Kendall's um this vitality of life, it kind of like kind of showed an opposite to Ewan, while Shiv's kind of is both it it highlighted his great nature, but also accentuated that Logan was a pretty harsh man who never see a woman as a whole person. And that's why oh, he yeah. kind of the is. funny one of the funniest parts of the scene was when he like had the four um like ex girlfriends all sitting with that him. was I love that. that was so I love funny. that. Ugh. Yeah, I it was like because now that Logan is dead, these women these women have no reason to hate each other anymore. Yeah. Really. Logan was the son of this universe that everybody orbited around. Yeah. And now he's gone. They're just a bunch of planets. Yeah. Mike drop. No. Wow. Um, um no. So Shift's speech was I really liked her speech. It sh- kind of sure served as a mirror to Ewan's. Um she mentions that, you know, they the fear they had of Logan in their childhood. But they also try to reinterpret his fear as a sign of Logan's importance and the weight of his work. Yeah. He discusses like how warm Logan can be with you if you just feel him in. Because he was like, he he is the son of this universe, I just said. He will make you feel warm if you're included. Definitely. He's He was a powerhouse of a man. 
Yeah. And I think one of the lines was like he worked with kings and queens and all that stuff. Just like yeah. trying to build him up as important. And you could tell this funeral, it was yeah. not just like a funeral because like nothing isn't ever nothing just what is it just, is. It's like yeah. a pu- this like publicly televised funeral. So like they need mm-hmm. to make sure that everything they say is like so carefully planned. And that's why they love Kendall's speech because he's like he gets it right on the nail. But yeah. and that's why at the end of the day, Roman, that's yeah, I him think, breaking apart there. Yeah, yeah, that's. So I think this is a good trajectory into the character of Roman. This episode we mentioned why we think he's he broke. You and speech kind of brought all the feelings up to the main part, yeah. but I felt like this episode, like you know. We're, next week is the finale, and so I yeah, do that's feel like it's extremely yeah. hard to believe because like yeah. it's hard to think like how are they gonna wrap everything up? But I know they're gonna stick the landing. Yeah, uh, this is a very relevant show, but there is a future in my mind where this show does go to a season five. You know, there is a future in my not. Not I'm saying it's gonna happen. I'm just yeah, saying, I'm. A, yeah, I mean, I any any show, five. any show could technically be extended. But, uh, yeah. But are these characters at the end of next episode, are they going to do more character reversals? Are they, are Shib, Roman, and um, Kendall going to be back, be together again? Or are these characters going to be the way they are from the la- from the ending of the next episode? Are they going to be like that forever? Or are they going to do more character reversals? And the thing is, is Kendall... I mean, Roman, is Roman ultimately going to end up just being fucked in the history of the show? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to decide actually how it ends, because, let me tell you something, they can either go uh, a sad ending or a happy ending. It just depends on how the showrunners actually want to end it, because you could have, like, the happy ending where, like, the whole family is back together, or you could have the sad one where, like, Shiv... Just goes and runs that company. It has to fight with Waystar, and then Roman is just like a broken man and is out of it. Mm-hmm. But although he's still a billionaire, so he just lives the rest of his life on like yachts. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, these people. I, I think I'm I'm accentuating on the last point you said because like they're built. No matter what, no matter how much they fight and they're but they are broken. They're always going to be billionaires. You know, they yeah. always have the money. And yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I agree. I, I don't think they're going to go the happy ending because, you know, that's not a very succession thing to have to do. Wow. I'm just saying, not a, not every show needs to end on, like, a downer note. Yeah, but when has succession ever been an upper? Wow. Uh, mm, okay, yeah, true. Um, so, I'm just saying, Roman was a very... Did you think Roman was gonna like fucking die in the in the protest scene? He's not gonna die in the. Protest. My dad said, "Oh, I think he might die." And then I told him, "That's not the he type might of... die." They're not. They're, said, not, they're not killing Roman this, like that. This is not that type of show, but it, I really found that to be an interesting scene. What What was your take on it? Oh, my take. Uh, he is just like he's kind of pissed that he threw away his relationship, kind of with his sister, just to mm. get this man to win the election, and then the dude just betrayed him, kind mm-hmm. of, by not blocking the deal. Mm-hmm. So then he just goes and is like, this doesn't matter, why, why are you protesting? And then he just starts, like, he just mm-hmm. pissed at everyone. It's, it's because, like, yeah, his he hates grief himself. Is just, yeah, his grief is just manifesting in all this. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree with that point. It's like, he just, he like, all these feelings coming from him, and he just hates himself, and he's kind of a masochist in, in that way, you know? Yeah. He just, he just, he's allowing himself so much pain and sadness, and that's why the Roman is like one of the deeper characters in the show. Because with the right nurturing of this season, because like if, okay, this is a world. Imagine they were strong. He was stronger to his father's temptations. Yeah. He could be a really whole person, and he could have just been with his siblings. Because his greatest strength is his siblings, and. Yeah. The destruction of that is just sad because we're not gonna. He never will become that whole person he wants to be. Yeah, when all three of them work together, they're greater than the sum of their parts. Yeah, and this ultimately the show, like this episode, because now it's not even a fucking Shiv 
versus Kendall and Roman. It's now it's, Roman versus Kendall versus Shiv. Yeah. I'll, okay. I don't feel like Roman isn't fighting not, with them. He's, he's kind of like a sideliner. He Kendall sidelined him hard this episode. Yeah. So Roman, it kind of feels more like the um the spectator trying to keep the two together while Kendall and Shiv have like the final fight. Yeah. I yeah, that could be that's that could be true, I think. I don't know. But I yeah. And so I would like Roman is just kind of like one of those tragic characters, I would say, because like he could be a great person, you know, with yeah. his siblings. And I don't know how they're gonna play his character out. I think it might be the tragic way where he's ultimately Sep- he's gonna fall into that sadness. You know what I really liked? I really enjoyed Jerry's l- looks when he was giving when he was breaking down because like she cares for him and that was sad. I feel like every, like that's like the one time I feel like Roman's ever like shown emotion in like a crowd or like. And you know what? Be- yeah, because you know what? You know what? What happened if anybody else gave was breaking down their father's funeral? Roman would yeah. laugh at them immediately. Um. Yes, that that is true. What happened? And so let's get into uh, Kendall, Kendall. Kendall lies, Shiv cries, Roman the showman lights up the sky. So, Kendall, this episode, throughout this entire season, you know that L- Kendall has been kind of Loganizing. He's becoming Logan, you know? Yeah, and you then he, that? in this one, he even, like, hires the bodyguard or, like, whatever, what is it, the dirt guy? Uh, oh, Colin? Yeah, that guy. He just, like, gets dirt on people. Oh, there's Hugo and there's Colin. The the guy, the, the small guy, guy or like the or bodyguard? the big imposing guy Logan had dinner with. Oh, Colin. Yeah, okay. that guy. Like he yeah. hires him. Mm-hmm. And so this was in the episode, kind of Kendall's coronation. I would say. I felt yeah. that. I felt that because, like, you know, everyone's going up to him. Yeah, Shiv and K- Matt and Mike go for uh, Menken got to. Shiv got to Mencken, but yeah. I'd say this was a very Logan episode, and uh, becoming Logan, and so it just, be- for me, it begs the question, is Succession just a story about a man, Logan, who couldn't yeah. change, and it brought the poison from his life into others, and he's making, he's just creating more poison clones of him in his children? You could see that. I mean, Kendall, I feel like all the stuff that happened to him episode is definitely going to cause him to become full Logan in the next episode. Like, losing his assistant mm. and losing the relationship he has kind of with his kids is definitely going to push him down into this more um, this more Logan path. Mm-hmm. Let's just talk about the assistant part for a bit. I was like, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Like, um, Last episode, we got another scene with her and Greg. In two, then two episodes, she's been characterized as like a full character. Yeah. Where in the past entire show, she barely talks. In the entire show, you can see her getting like more and more like, what what the fuck is Kendall doing? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I totally agree because like now, now, because you know, at the end of last episode, um, Shift says things do happen. And with the election of Matson, we're getting to see because I uh, know Matson. I say Ma- I said Mankin. Yeah. Yeah, um, confused I think For a second, I thought um was so was it indicated that Jess is leaving because of Mankin election? They mentioned because he said, oh, is this because of Mankin? It could be that. Because, I mean, the Mankin election was a big thing, but also yeah. like the meeting might have been yeah. in the schedule before the election. Yeah, and I hated how Kendall had no fucking boundary with her. She was like, we'll do it later. And then he, he forces her to tell her. Yeah, and then and he's like, you did this on the, my dad's death. And, like, and then you could you, you just count, you, you could just tell she wanted to be like, you, you told me to, and she just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, because Kendall has no boundaries and no way, no, he doesn't stop. But yeah. I thought it was really important, because this signifies... I, I, I say this a lot, but it's always there's always this turning point, you know? And this was maybe the biggest turning point. All the ships are gone, and now he just has, like, he just has only to become one thing. Kendall Logan Roy. Wow. That's a good, that's a good line. 
And I, it's either this, it's either he fully becomes Kendall, or does he fall back into his old Kendall addiction ways next it's, episode? I doubt he's just gonna go and like just like do a line after losing the meeting. I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't see that as, as how the show ends. No. Okay. Do you see the show ends as like Kendall becoming like you know how in the Succession intro they have like and one of the shots yeah. is like Logan's back. Does that just be that's the last shot of the show? But it's Kendall. That that's really cool. I think definitely Kendall takes control of the company. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, definitely how how it's going down. In this episode, let's get into shit. She's also kind of been Loganizing in a way because you know, um, she feels kind of like she's putting the pressure cooker on 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 others because like you know last episode she was like guys the election that's a uh, that's like we can't do this. It's like really, um, and then this episode, she's like, "That's just personal politics. We can put that aside." You yeah, know? yeah. And like, she's, she's kind of like a character. Like, she doesn't really have a strong loyalty. And I saw this video that says the disloyal case of Shibroy that she's ultimately she does very betray ad- like so many people. Like even like Her the pop- first season, yeah. she's working with that um that senator guy, and she just leaves. Yeah, it's like. There's like it's due to her childhood, like she fundamentally feels broken as like a woman in this world, and so she always feels like she needs to keep her options open. Yeah. And this is just kind of like showing like she is separating from her brothers and all for her own thing. Because I think a big flaw of her is that she feels like she's so smart, but doesn't realize that doesn't make her a good CEO. Yeah, like and yeah, she. Would not make a good CEO, but she thinks she would be a good CEO. Yeah, and yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with that because, like, you know, it's like she's always just trying to do the things she wants to do, but it's always kind of like failing in a way, you know. Yeah, and she's not gonna make a good CEO, but you know, she's good. She's a good convincer, you know. She can, she can close you up to someone, but her promises mean nothing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's really this episode, the next episode I see, it's like, I think Roman, in terms of the episode of the show, he's kaput. Yeah. It's really a battle between Kendall, I mean, and Shiv. Yeah, Kendall and Shiv. Definitely. And I really do not see a way that the family comes back together from this. Probably not. I definitely feel like Shiv embodies more of, like, trying to change the company mm-hmm. into something new, and Kendo more represents keeping it the way it is. Mm-hmm. Especially, I, yeah. like, like, the symbolism of the acquisition, which would be, like, a big change. Kendall's completely against that, because he wants to keep the old, and Shiv wants the new. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. that because, like, it's like showing, like, which t- what type of, what t- parts of Logan are they keeping with them? Yeah. And because Logan, as much, he could sense change, but he could not, he could never adapt to it, you know? Yeah. But, and so, this, because, well, a good thing about the show is like, the creator of the show, name is Jesse Armstrong. He's a, he's, he's actually British, which is kind of interesting, you know? Yeah. And so he's at, he's has like he has ways because he's he's doing it from kind of like a different perspective. He's not in the ultra elite or he's not Antifa storming um and protest. He's doing yeah. it from a middle ground perspective of how he pursue sees the world of these characters and how they fundamentally they are just what they are and they can't really change. There is character growth, but they always fall back into different patterns when different things happen, just like real life, you know. Yeah. Because Connor, he's Connor Roy was who he is from the beginning to the end. A guy who always wants to play pretend. He doesn't want to do the actual work. He just yeah. he's broken by um, Logan Roman from start to finish. He was this broken kid who needed his siblings and people to care about him so he yeah. could be better. Kendall's always this guy who want. Kendall is the only one I'd say has significant character growth. Um, I feel like he is pretty consistent by trying to um yeah take his father's place. 
yeah from like beginning I, to end that's what that's all he's been trying to do and now and, if it's like if it's with his blessing or not that does change yeah that does change but he's i yeah i totally agree now that i think he consistent Shiv, yeah. She's always been feeling this like disloyal woman in a man's world. She's yeah. always having these troubles, and it's changed. Tom, we feel like Tom changes over season three, but he kind of falls into like these back fall, kind of fell back into these patterns of like kind of feeling sorry for himself in a way. Yeah. And the only one, actually, the only one with real character growth is Greg. Yeah, and that's just him becoming worse. Yeah, and so let's just get into predictions, you know? Predictions, okay. Um, Roman, will probably see him try to bring Shiv and Kendall together. It's not going to work. Uh, he'll probably have to pick a side. Don't know which side he'll pick. Don't want to really predict that. I am yeah. going to assume Kendall wins the um, the fight. Yeah. yeah, or they go... Option three, you know, like something totally different, you know. I feel like that might be the way the show goes. A merger between the two and just Or nobody gets the company at all or something. Something like Yeah, that. the SEC knocks down the door and it takes down the company for tax fraud. That's a perfect ending. Well, you know how this show this show, unlike other shows like Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul or something like that, they focus on like a, sc- a full scope of two lives of two men. This show focuses in a in a in a, kind of like a single moment in our history. You know, it's a reflection yeah. of what our time is now. And but I, that just all goes to say, do you think they might do a time jump? Probably, actually, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know. I could literally see like the ending shot just literally being, uh, Kendall announcing Roman is no longer CEO, and he's the pure CEO. But mm-hmm. actually, I know, I, I'm going to change my answer. I do not think there's going to be a time jump. It's going to end with just one of them taking the throne. Yeah. Because that's not, it doesn't feel very succession-y, you know, to be yeah. a time jump. Well, but, I also did not expect a Barry time jump, and I was very wrong about that. Yeah, Barry's more artsy, and we're, we're going to get to that next. Yeah. But one last thing I would just like to say is, like, all these people, because I think with you and Speak, what was interesting that it's like showing how kind of like our traumas enforce who we are. Yeah. That's yeah, our yeah. Char- characters. And like at the end of the day, I don't think Kendall is not a good father. And I feel like it's just going to create a, a feedback cycle that it's going to be hard forever to break the cycle. Shiv is not going to be a good mother. I can say that with on- honesty. Nobody's guys, they're going to just continue this cycle that. It will it ever end, or will it just end when the sun, when the Earth goes into the sun? You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so I would say this just it, it's gonna my all to say is that my prediction it's gonna be a very sad ending on how these characters are gonna be ultimately broken with themselves. Yeah, uh, no one's gonna really be happy at the end. Yeah. So I totally agree. Yeah. Let's get into Barry. Something Barry. Almost, almost similarly, I don't think anybody's going to be happy at the end of Barry either. Uh, I don't know. I definitely feel like... Hmm, maybe like... like uh, yeah. Fuchs could be happy. I mean, yeah, he's already happy right now. I mean, he can't... He's, he could... He's happy. Barry could yeah. kill him. That is probably a way it could go down. Yeah, like finally taking down his old mentor. Yeah, but that yeah, that's not very you know artsy. That, feels, that doesn't really feel that Barry that to take down because I think the show's thesis is that Barry is kind of like the bad guy. He is the bad. <laughs> what you saying? You saying Fuchs is the good guy? No, I'm just I don't know if they're gonna do that. Maybe there's no good guy. Okay, All let's right. just get her. Instant thoughts. Plot re or instant thoughts, yeah. Um, way more comedic than the last few episodes, and I really like that. Yeah, yeah. Funny part was the heads in the box. I like that scene. <laughs> that scene was really funny. Yeah, it just, just like oh, he opened three of them. It was so obvious that they were heads. <laughs> just a little blood on the bottom of the yeah. box. And he said, "No, Isaiah." Yeah, he was. <laughs> I was simping for Isaiah pretty hard. 
And so I didn't know Fuchs's team were so good at killing. Damn. Yeah. It was um. Well, it was like a twenty v four. So. Yeah, but they were supposed to be the Foo Box, the future the Foo ultimate uh, something killers. I don't know what was it called. Uh, I don't know the f- the fucking oh. ultimate badass killers. Was that? I think that's it. No, I have it on the screen. No, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. So, um, sorry, I left something. Um, plot um, recap. I yeah. would just. I'll, I'll give my quick thoughts first. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Despite my love of the season, actually, this was the first episode I feel a bit weird about. Um, well, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> Oh, really? I guess we're differing in that play. Yeah. I think it made sense the way it played out. I'm excited for the ending, but I felt weird about this episode's structure, you know? Mm. So All right, I guess... Plot recap. You want to do guess, that? Or? Yeah, I'll plot recap. So, we start... Barry is being tortured by um the guy... uh The father of the girl, of the girl he killed. Uh... And then he's like, I gave Fuchs $250,000. Um, mm-hmm. And then the dad is like, oh, bro, what? What? Fuchs? I mean, not Fuchs. What the dad? Gene? Gene, yeah, sorry. Gene, he gave Gene $250,000. And he's like, bro, Gene, what do you, you didn't tell me this? Uh, okay, so yeah. Then we see Cristobal is, no. Bro, why am I, I'm getting every move wrong. Okay. Uh, Hank is is <laughs> is trying to kill Fuchs, um, mm-hmm. and then and- he tries, he fails, he feels so he fails so much that he's like, you know, I'm, we're just gonna help. Give him everything Fuchs. he wants. Yeah, give, give Fuchs everything he wants and try and just kill Barry. Um, Sally goes back to L.A. to mm-hmm. um get away from the people that were trying to kill her. Do we ever find out who was trying to kill her? I feel like that was all in her head. They hit a truck through the house. Okay, there's, a, there's also a guy in a suit, in a black suit, just slamming the door. So yeah. I think he's a bit dissociative. I, f- they, I, I, I actually am not sure, because she was, like, very drunk. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, so she's in L.A., and then she goes to meet with Kusano. But Kusano, he gets a call from an acting agent saying, Daniel Day-Lewis wants to play him in a movie. And, I, and it's like, what? And then and Mark Wahlberg is like, Mark Whoa. Wahlberg wants to play Barry Berkman. <laughs> That'd be such a funny after He's like, hey, I'm Barry. Uh, I, I'm in Boston. I was really thinking, like, Mark Wahlberg, you mean the dude from Daddy's Home too? I would not see him as a good Barry. <laughs> hey, I'm Barry. Uh, I, like to, I like to act, and I'm a hitman. Yeah, but what's like that was probably one of the yeah. funniest jokes. That's all just a setup. Yeah. Because you could tell there was like, how do we get Kusa? And I was like, Daniel Day Lewis. And then I guess the ego is so big, he just believes it. For a moment, I really thought they were gonna get Mark Wahlberg for this show. I was like, yeah, I I was actually like, did they actually get Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> I was like, no. But uh, yeah, now that you're saying it like this, I feel like I was funnier than I thought, and it was a bit better. But yeah. all to say that let's go through each of the characters, you know? Yeah, uh just like the final thing is Sally gets yeah. kidnapped by uh, Hank. Oh yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And so Barry has to do the thing. So I'm excited because like this is my thing. It's like my my biggest disappointment in the episode was um was its bleak was um was, I like the balance of like the humor and stuff. But my yeah. biggest disappointment um, was that ge- the interrogation was not, like, as more impactful. It was not long at all. It was not, like, an analysis of him as a character. It was just... Yeah. It was, like, one... Uh, also, this, yeah. this was so stupid. He just left him tied up with a yeah. knife that close. Dude. Yeah, that's dude, a bit convenient. Dude, you're a Marine. Do you know Marines can get out of this? I No, first, I was, hu- I was 100% sure. A hundred percent sure it was all like a trap. Me too. It was a trap, and then Barry's gonna walk into the trap. No, he just let him run free. He was so stupid. That was a really big. Okay, yeah, I get. It. You want to go after Gene, but really, you're gonna leave a fucking 
Marine. At least leave him blindfolded or something. Keep the goggles on him. And really fucking chair? A fucking chair? Why not to the fucking ground or something? Yeah. Okay, that was a bit convenient for me, but I understand. I'm, I am going to be excited when fucking Barry just rampages through Noah Hanks' men. Yeah. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's done it before, effortlessly. Yeah. Um, uh. So, Barry, I feel like Succession, we can tell what kind of where it's going, but Barry's a harder show to pinpoint down. Yeah. Um, yeah. This episode I thought was really good. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm way more a fan of Barry on the comedy side than the drama side. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Fast and the Furious stuff, that was really funny. The Rocket stuff was insanely funny. The fact that they only did, like, one shot was also <laughs> pretty funny. Like, they shoot the Rocket, they pin over, where's the Rocket? And then they just run away, and the camera just pans to them getting pinned down. And then the phone call, oh, it was so good. Did you All think that. Noah Hank was gonna die um, when they were shooting? Oh no, he was, they definitely. I did. I yeah. like. I thought like like if I like, if it was a real thing, they he probably would have been dead. But no, I no, they could have kept him alive. Yeah, I feel like next episode is gonna be like the crossover of worlds between all the characters because now we see you no know, Hank and Sally. Yeah, and Dukes. It's all. How that. does um Hank know what Sa does Hank know Sally from like another scene? I I think I might have missed that. Maybe because you know Cause, like she says Hank Sally Reed. I'm like maybe they met each about other. Maybe the information about Barry came out, you know? Yeah. Like, in, in the prison stuff, all that. that yeah, that. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's get into specific characters. Barry, this episode, as I said, was a bit this morning, but it was not, this was, like, a not a very, very heavy episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only in, like, two scenes. <laughs> like, three. It's, like, the interrogation. He gets out of the interrogation, and then just picking up the phone. My yeah. only thing is that I feel like him just sitting down in like in Jim Moss's kitchen, like just showing. I, I from Bear, Bill Hader's acting, I could feel like he feels like, what am I doing? Like, like not yeah. know what, I, know what I'm doing. Like, wh what is the end game of all of this exactly? Um. Yeah. Okay. One one moment that I thought was really good was when Sarah's when 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 um, what's his son's name? John. John. Whenever John was like, um, what do we do after this? And then Sally's just like realizes. Yeah, what the fuck do we do after this? Like, what are we hoping to I achieve? I love that moment. It was like her, like the the audio went out, and it's like yeah. just focusing on her face. Like, what's happening? It's like you know, John Wick can't be killing people forever because of his fucking dog. He something has to end. You know, Barry has to end this journey. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like now next episode is kind of. I feel like it was a good set for the last episode, though. Yeah, 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 they're both teasing them very well. I hope it's like a one-hour finale. That would be good. But it's yeah, probably only like thirty minutes, but that's fine. Um, it, yeah, it doesn't need to be an hour. I feel like they yeah. could wrap it up in thirty minutes. Um, I feel like it's ending now. Noah Hank is going to become is becoming the like the a minor villain for Barry. Oh yeah, I mean, I swear they he swaps between like villain and like allies so quickly and like mm -hmm. so many times like in like the first episode he literally swapped from friend to villain in like a span of mm -hmm. 30 minutes and then yeah throughout the seasons it's flipped so many times mm -hmm. and so now it's now i say like that i did like that but i did feel it like kind of reduced noah hank's character to just a, a like a, 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 a like a, a obstacle for barry yeah no i feel like you could tell that crystal's death really like broke him so mm -hmm. it makes sense how he's now just like this hardened villain mm -hmm. still a funny villain but still a villain i think Hopefully he gets shot and is just like falls into like a thing of sand, and that's his grave. That would be pretty artsy. That'd be pretty artsy indeed. Dukes is also going to be probably in this thing where it's like, does Barry take down his ultimate tormentor at the end? Yeah, the but Raven. I feel like... The Raven is one yeah. of my favorite ongoing jokes. Yeah, um, but I feel like taking down the villain means like Barry can change, and I feel like. With a character later down, Barry's thesis is that people can't change, you know? Yeah. Very similar to the theme of succession. Now, people are just the way they are. 
Yeah, there's also like um Better Call Saul as a theme like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the end of Better Call Saul, he does admit responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Because like he's not gonna be able. I don't think he's gonna change much in the actual prison when he's in there for eighty six years. <laughs> yeah. But one um, um one missed opportunity I thought was when like the heads got shipped. I was mm-hmm. I really wanted like. Because he said he said that he got a package from Fuchs. I so wanted it to be a bullet. It would have been so funny <laughs> been to so send funny. another bullet. <laughs> that would have been really... That was funny. Um, yeah. That, yeah. And so Fuchs, I feel like he's also going to be part of this... Um, um, Part of this... Maybe this battle. I, I feel like it's going to be a firefight for that part. But I really... My most confusing part is like... Here, what about is the Gene stuff? I really like what they did with Gene in this episode. Yeah. Um, I felt like they kind of finally they're like last episode like he's enlightened now, you know, he's finally changed. But no, he hasn't. It's, but like, Barry's ultimate thesis is that people can't change. Yeah, no, like he literally was like so hard about like no, I only want the preservation of this, and like Daniel Day Lewis is like fuck yeah, and then he's instantly. Is like, yeah, I don't care about this as long as Daniel Day Lewis is playing me. And then those eight years on that kibbutz in Israel meant nothing because the moment he hears some attention, he falls back. And that's ultimately his trap, his need for this fame, you know? And so I found it really kind of like biblical and Shakespearean that he gets caught in the hotel room. What yeah. was your thoughts on the on the hotel room take high, take down? Um, I just like how they lured him into it because it kind of shows how his motivation is just or like that his veil will just fall immediately when faced with some fame. Um, yeah. and then, I mean, I feel like Jim Moss has just always been like hesitantly working with Husano. Like, he doesn't want to, but he kind of has to. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, And so, do you think Gene's going to take the ultimate fall for this entire thing? Probably. That is pretty Shakespearean, that he takes the fall for, for all these crimes. For Barry's crimes, basically. Or does Gene get out of it? I don't think he does. That would be a really sad ending, because... If Gene takes it. And it makes sense, but it's a sad ending, you see? Yeah. And so that's how I think the Gene stuff is going to play out. I feel like Jim Moss is going to be interjected some way into the Barry Fuchs, Noah Hank thing. Yeah, yeah. But I really don't know. I feel like it's going to end in like a big firefight at the end of the day. And then Barry kills... Just, we can get predictions because that's like all we have left. Yeah. Now. Oh wait, I want to say so- something about Sally first. I felt like I think I finally understand Sally's character this episode. Um, because like she goes up to the police officer and she sees that it's it's the guy who wanted her. It's like at the end of the day, Sally, just like everyone else, is a person who's fundamentally haunted by her actions and she can't change her pattern of behavior. And it just like it's going to end with everyone. I feel like Barry's a it's going to be a much easier to show to tell that it's going to be a sad ending. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of a single character that actually um, is going to get a good ending. Hopefully, Hank. Maybe Hank. Yeah, I feel like I can see Hank dying. Yeah, Hank you know, by dying Barry. in a and then being buried in the sand. Here, here. Okay, so Gene gets caught by Jim and he goes to prison. Firefight of Barry. He kills Fuchs and Noah Hank, but Dally or John kills him. Not gonna happen. Not, Not gonna, gonna happen. Ha- yes, yeah, Jim Moss's bullet. I don't know. I feel like it's too. I feel like it's gonna start maybe a cycle of violence in John. That if Barry dies, it's gonna start a new Barry cycle in John. You know. Maybe. But I do think Jim Moss deserves the kill. Yeah. Do you see? So it's not going to be pretty... Sally or John. Someone else is going to get the bullet on them. Mm-hmm. What do you think on F- so predictions? What do you think having to know Hank and Fuchs? Uh, ooh, Fuchs. Hmm. 
I'm saying they they meet each other one last time. Barry's like, you put me on this path. And then um, Fuchs is like, uh, all I did was steer you. Uh, this is your doing. And they, I think he kills Fuchs. Uh, and then probably kills Hank. Yeah. And Sally? Sally, uh... Kind of a hard one to pinpoint. Probably just turns herself in. Yeah. You could probably just, like, and they'll say, like, you know, they'll just blame it on Barry or something, and then she'll just be free and she'll be sad. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention last episode was it was really weird, just, like, like when Barry's brought in for interrogation, Jim Moss just shaves Barry's beard for no reason. Oh yeah, he just does just, it. Maybe he didn't want the actors to keep Bill Hader still having a beard. Yeah, and, I mean it makes him look like a lot more like he originally did. So maybe yeah. it's like a show where he hasn't changed. That's. That's what we call mise en scène or something. Oh my oh. god, do not bring film comp into this. So, okay, well, we've gone like almost an hour, right? So let's close it up. Um, yeah. I say it's both shows, they're heading into, I think we're heading to the ending of Two Beasts of Television. And <laughs> we're, really excited. we're really excited to see how it ends. This All has right. been HBO's Double Wait, Threat. No, no, who are we giving the point to? Oh. Succession, but I, still, okay, I love Barry. Three to one. Don't worry. Maybe Barry can maybe not lose. Uh, maybe not lose, but be a great show. Yep. But this has been HBO's Double Threat. Thanks for listening. Yep. Bye.